Howdy Spacers, and welcome back to Blank Space Dolls. As mentioned in my previous tutorial, this custom is sure to be fatal, or fatal to be exact. But before we get into the inspiration for this project, I want to announce this is actually a collaboration with Ciro from Kido's Workshop. I feel honored and very excited to be able to collaborate with another YouTube doll artist that I'm sure you all know and love. I'm also a huge fan of Cito's work and really enjoyed sharing ideas and progress photos on our dolls, as well as getting to know each other a little bit better. I also think we have very similar tastes in fashion and artistry, which makes this the perfect match for a collaboration. And with that being said, let's check out the inspiration for my version of a femme fatale. The exact definition of a femme fatale is an attractive and seductive woman, especially one who will ultimately bring disaster to any man who becomes involved with her, also known as a seductress, temptress, siren, and enchantress. I love these descriptive words because they really tell you what kind of character these women portray. But for my character, I really wanted to take inspiration from Hollywood's classic film noir period, which was generally extending from the 1920s to the late 1950s, and the film noir era is associated with low-key black and white visual style, and I thought that this was just so beautiful and so original, and I really took a lot of inspiration from actresses like Rita Hayworth, Ava Gardner, and Jean Tierney, who were really popular during this period. And of course, a little bit of Jessica Rabbit, who infamously said, I'm not bad, I'm just drawn that way. I thought that was just the perfect line for exactly what I want my character to be. So with that being said, let's get into the making of my femme fatale. This just in, during the editing of this video, Miley Cyrus's 2019 Oscar look just dropped and let's just say I have to place this as inspiration in here just because the final product is so similar to what her look was and I'm really excited. Miley, you looked great. For this project, I decided to go in with the headless headmistress Bloodgood as my base doll because as stated before, I love the big sister body type and I thought that this womanly figure would be better to represent the femme fatale theme I was going for. But also, I love her facial mold because of her high cheekbones and strong jawline. As usual, you want to go in with your 100% acetone and wipe away the factory paint from the face and the scalp. Once all of that factory paint is removed, you can really see how beautiful the sculpting of her face mold is and how defined and sharp her features are. Then I'll just go in and begin to map out where I want the rerouting to be and this will be a partial reroute. For the hair this time, I'm actually going to be using this black 100% acrylic yarn by Craftsmart and I actually measure it a little bit longer than 6 inches because I am going to lose a little bit of that in the rerouting process. And then, like mentioned in my previous video, you're actually just going to unravel the strands of yarn and it's going to give you these four smaller strands of yarn and I just loop that onto my rerouting tool and stab it into my drawn areas. And here you're going to see the three steps of the yarn rerouting, what it looks like after it's been rerouted, then brushed out, and of course the bangs have been flat ironed and straightened. And here's what it looks like when it's all been flattened out, and of course I left all of that space because I did say it was going to be a partial reroute. And then I begin preparing the yarn wefts by looping the strands of yarn around a hanger and brushing them out and then flat ironing them as well before cutting them off and laying them on a silicone mat and applying glue to the top ends of them. And while we allow that to dry, we're going to move on to the face up. I've definitely shown more in-depth tutorials on my face up method, but here I'm just going to kind of show you some of the in-between layers, so after it's been sealed with MSC. Just because I do feel like at this point everyone has kind of seen the way that face-ups are done and as artists we all have our own way of doing them so you'll just kind of see me going through the layers here. And then I do stop for a little bit and show that I begin to put in some of the details and darken some of the colors. And of course if you guys have any questions about the materials that I use they will be listed in the description box below. But I also will list them at the beginning of the clips as well from now on. And of course, if you've been with me for a while, you'll notice that my face-up technique has changed just a little bit. I'm really challenging myself as an artist to add more details into the face, mainly with the shadows and the highlighted areas. 
Um, but also you will know that my dolls now have two bottom lashes whereas before I only used to do one because I could never figure out how other artists do those floofy bottom lashes but I'm really proud that they have two bottom lashes now so yay me. You will also notice that I've inserted a few clips with only half of the face done so you can see how much color payoff you can get in one layer if it seals correctly. And just a few more in between shots. This is layer 3 after being sealed with Mr. Super Clear. And here you'll see layer 4. The difference in between these layers aren't as drastic. You're just really going in and building up that actual color in the iris colored parts of her eyes because those do normally take the longest to build up. And once that fourth layer of Mr. Super Clear has fully dried, I actually go in and begin to add the eye shine detail to my eyes. I think every artist does this a little bit differently, so this is the technique that I use. And then you'll actually go in and seal that with Liquitex High Gloss Varnish. Then we can take the head wrap off and continue with the hair, adding those yarn wefts that we prepared earlier, and trimming off the extra and just adding that to the back of the head. Here's what it looks like once all those yarn wefts have been placed. As I said before, this was a partial reroute because I didn't want the hair to get bulky with the particular style that I wanted to achieve. And for the style, I actually use a combination of straws and foam rollers to begin to get the shape that I'm looking for. Then we move on to body blushing. For this project, I mainly focused my blushing on the areas of her skin that would be seen in the outfit. I did know that she was going to have a plunging neckline and long sleeves, so I didn't really focus my blushing on her arms. Instead, I focused it mainly on her chest, down the front of her stomach, and around her clavicle and neck area, because I wanted those to be a little bit more pronounced since those would be visible. And for her shoes this time, I'm actually going to sculpt them freehand by using epoxy sculpt. I know, somebody call the press because I'm actually going to be sculpting things. And for that, I do start by covering her legs and feet in saran wrap and just putting a general shape of the shoe that I want and building it around. And I did actually use pins for the heel of the shoe. And then I'm going to go in with my Dremel tool once that is set and begin to build the shape that I'm looking for. And of course, be careful and use caution whenever using power tools and be sure that you're wearing a mask because you don't want to inhale any of the dust created from drilling epoxy sculpt. 45 minutes later, this is what one of the shoes looked like and then you're just going to go in and mimic it on the other side. And here's what the shoes look like after my first pass with my Dremel tool and then I'm going to go in and actually add the heels. Off camera, I actually did add epoxy sculpt to the heel part of the shoe, and then I just add this buffer tip to the end of my Dremel tool, and I just go over both shoes just to make sure that they're nice and smooth, and there's no jagged or raw edges. Then I just went in and painted them with black acrylic paint, and then covered the outsides in black glitter, and I do seal that in with Liquitex high gloss varnish to keep all the glitter from flaking off. But of course, the shoes aren't done quite yet, and I definitely can't let my doll get away with wearing such a simple black shoe. So I'm actually going to add a gladiator detail using jump rings and ribbon to go all the way up to be a thigh high sandal. In true blank space fashion, I got inspiration for this shoe from the Victoria's Secret 2016 fashion show. For the actual gladiator sandals, you'll need to create eight of these in varying sizes with the jump ring and ribbon. For the actual straps themselves, you'll need to create 16 of these with the folded piece and you'll connect that to the jump ring. This is what one side looks like once you've put all of those pieces together. And then I'm just going to kind of put the shoe down here to show how it's going to connect. And then here you'll see it on her actual foot and these are actually permanent pieces. I did have to glue the straps to the back of the leg but you could make them removable if you want to create small tiny buckles. For the outfit this time, I wanted to stay true to my theme and make sure that I paid homage to the original film noir femme fatales, but also modernize it and bring it into the present day. So utilizing the sequin fabric for most of the outfit and using leather as the detailing elements. But of course, to ensure that I keep her classy, I'm actually going to make her some undergarments using this black lace trim that I was actually sent by one of my Instagram pals. So thank you so much, Kim, for sending this lace. It's beautiful. 
and I'm actually going to use that to create the undergarments. And of course, I'm not using a pattern for this. I'm just applying it to the body and cutting out general shapes that I think will work. To ensure that they didn't come out too bulky, I made the decision to go ahead and glue it on the back directly to her body. Now to begin the gown portion of this custom, I cut out mirroring images of this shape here. I've said before I don't really use pattern pieces, I just kind of eyeball everything and hope that it works, which is not great from a tutorial standpoint, but I do try to show the general shapes of what I use to create the outfits. Then I go in and pin the bottom of those pattern pieces together and I begin hand stitching the bottom portion of it. I do end up hand sewing most of this because of the fragile nature of the sequined material and I also didn't want to run the risk of ruining it or getting the little pieces snagged on my sewing machine. Once that's complete, I'm going to go in with the same black lace trim that I used for the undergarments and actually use that to finish my edges on the top of my gown, mainly focusing on the scalloped or ruffled edges of the lace, pinning it and then hand stitching it all the way up. And then once that's complete, you're going to do the same thing to the other side. Then to ensure it doesn't move around, I do tape the base part to her body and then add a temporary stitch around the neckline just to hold it in place while I add the sleeves. To make a template for your sleeves, you're actually going to draw around the doll's arm and then sketch a shape around those drawn arms and make sure that you leave enough space for a seam allowance and you'll see here the dotted line is actually where the fold of the fabric will be and the full line here at the bottom is where the seam will be. Then you'll cut that template out and trace it onto the folded edge of a piece of paper and that'll actually give you your sleeve shape. And then you'll transfer that shape onto your sequined fabric or your fabric of choice. And then when you sew up that seam on the inside, you'll come out with this tiny little sleeve and then you'll attach that to the bodice portion of the gown. And for the actual skirt portion of the dress, I go in with my rotary cutter and I started with this original template which I kind of just made out of paper towels and you'll see here in my first attempt that it just wasn't long enough and it wasn't really the silhouette that I liked so I scrapped that and just started over. This is the actual shape that you're going to want if you want your gown to have a train and as I've stated in previous videos before, and I'm sure we all know, sometimes mistakes are made and you just kind of have to roll with it and it's okay to have to start over. And I do it actually quite a bit more than what video footage shows. I did end up going in and adding that lace trim to the entire perimeter of the skirt, which is the same lace that I used on the top half of the dress as well to keep it consistent. And then I add these little dark pleats into the skirt just to make sure that the waistline fits a little bit better. Then I go in and pin the skirt portion to the bodice portion of the gown and hand stitch all the way around the waistline. And then I'm also going to go in and add this little accessory that I found at a local craft store and attach a piece of leather to act as a belt. Then final touches are adding the 3D lashes and Liquitex high gloss varnish. And let's take a look at the final photos. Here's my version of a film noir inspired femme fatale. Her name is Bella Mira, which means beauty and wonder. I've decided to stick to the original film noir style and start with some black and white images. Please let me know what you think of Bella in the comment section below and make sure to subscribe to my channel if you're new here and join the Spacer family. I would also like to give a special thank you to Ciro for this amazing collaboration opportunity and make sure that after this video you go and check out how he made Daphne over there. I'll leave that link in the description box below. And of course if you're interested in seeing more images of Bella Mira or just want to see some snippets of my future projects or projects to come, be sure to check me out on Instagram at Blank Space Dolls where in my world there's always a blank space. Let's customize it together. Until next time, spacers, see you soon.